Bad news for the FBI does not end there. The agency was roasted by lawmakers and at times by the DOJ inspector general during a fiery Senate hearing earlier today. There is a serious problem with the culture at FBI headquarters. It just seemed to be a culture of impunity um, where the rules did not apply. I can't believe that this happened to my FBI. I can't think of something more concerning than a law enforcement officer suggesting that they're going to try and use or may use their powers to affect a, an election. Here now is Byron York, chief political correspondent for the Washington Examiner and a Fox News contributor, and John Summers, Democratic strategist and former communications director for Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Uh, Byron, you and I have spoken a lot leading up to that hearing today. Uh, what did you make of that, that, that culture of the FBI? Well, you had Republicans making their case that the Horowitz report showed extensive evidence of bias. You were just discussing that with Congressman Ratcliffe. You had Democrats kind of clinging to the conclusion that, that Michael Horowitz did say that, that uh, he had not seen any uh, documentary or testimonial evidence of bias in the specific decision uh, whether or not to prosecute uh, Hillary Clinton. But, but basically, Horowitz did say, look, there was tons and tons uh, of bias here, and, and Republicans took it from there. You know, John, this is the FBI. The American people, they look on at this and they want to have full confidence in the FBI. That needs to be restored. Will it? Uh, well, I, ho I certainly hope so. I mean, first of all, we have to remember what we're talking about is a handful of people, not the entire agency of 37,000. And, it, and it's sad to see this department, you know, having the baby thrown out with the bathwater on this one, because as you just, as, as Byron just said, you know, most of these agents are hardworking people who work to keep the American people safe. And I don't think anyone would consider the FBI a bastion of liberalism. In fact, one of the text messages, and I remember uh, Byron reporting on this on Friday, actually mentioned that if you ask anyone around us who they're voting for, they'll tell you it's Trump. So while there may have been this culture issue that certainly needs to be investigated, that's not something that should be applied to the entire FBI. And I think if there's one thing that came out of this hearing, it's that there was no deep state conspiracy or plot against the president or his campaign. And I'm sorry that, you know, Republicans don't like it, but conclusions do matter. And if we aren't going to trust the inspector general who's supposed to, you know, take this non-biased approach, then who do we trust? Well, I want to get Byron to respond to that because, Byron, I know that when I spoke to you earlier, um, we were talking about Peter Schrock and the fact that he's willing to testify. And now we know Chairman Goodlatte has officially subpoenaed him tonight. We could potentially not only not only see Peter Schrock up there and answering questions to members of Congress, but finally hear the stories. I mean, he, this could be very revealing testimony. Exactly. First, on the issue of it being a handful of people involved, uh, Senator Hatch addressed that today and said, well, yeah, maybe there was a handful of people. Unfortunately, they included the director of the FBI, the uh, deputy director of the FBI, the lead investigator on both the Clinton and the Trump investigation. So uh, they were a really, really important handful. Now, on this testimony of uh, Peter Strzok, and, and, and lawmakers have been trying for months uh, to get this to happen, uh, I think that there's going to be a lot more more than just bias questions uh, about Peter Strzok. Remember, P Strzok actually led the Trump-Russia investigation when it was uh, in the FBI from the summer of 2016, in the middle of the campaign, all the way to May 2017, when uh, he uh, joins the Mueller investigation and then stays there until the end of July of 2017. So I think some lawmakers are going to say, look, we know you don't like Trump. We got that. How did this investigation start? Tell us about George Papadopoulos. Tell us about Joseph Mifsud. Tell us about the people who approached uh, Trump, uh, Trump uh, employees with it, or seeking information. Tell us about the informants. There's a lot that lawmakers want to know. And, and, and going into this, Peter Strzok, before you even learned of the subpoena tonight, Peter Strzok's uh, lawyer said he's willing to testify. He will not plead the fifth. Uh, do you expect this final word to you, John, to be revealing? Well, I certainly hope one of the first things he does when he gets up there is is provide an explanation to the American people and an apology 
for what he has done and for casting a shadow on the FBI. But the reality is, you know, you can talk about bias and what led up to the investigation starting, but at the end of the day, Robert Mueller, who's respected by people on both sides of the aisle, or at least was up until this point, uh, when, when the president has been uh, trashing him on Twitter and in other places, uh, we have to trust that he's doing the right thing here. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, evidence matters. And let's not lose sight of the fact that 13 Russians were indicted as a result of this process. So this investigation matters. It's important. And we should let it go on. And I think that that evidence is what the inspector general talked about today. He saw the bias in the text, but he had no evidence that that played out uh, in the decision making of the investigation. That's right. John and Byron, thank you to both of you.